Right then, welcome back to the channel. It's time for Everton this weekend. Then after the 3-2 victory in Europe over Bodo Glimt, we have extended our un unbeaten run to now six matches. It's almost starting to feel like a little bit of form, isn't it? And we've won four of those as well. Amarin will hope uh, to continue this streak against Everton at Old Trafford come Sunday. Everton, on the other hand, are winless in four coming into Sunday's game. Um, they have lost just once in that run, but they haven't won as well. So I think this is a winnable game for United. And United should be going into it with the intention of winning this game. Uh, they haven't won in their last five games against United and they haven't won at Old Trafford since 2013. You can guess who was in charge when that happened. Uh, right, how do they play? Well, obviously it's Sean Dyche, so you can expect them to be rocking a 4-4-2, right? He's actually regressed a little bit, and it's probably going to be looking more like a 4-5-1, uh, actually, uh, when they come to Old Trafford, I think, on Sunday. They've they've brought a very particular patois to the way they play. Um, in an era of everybody sort of basically having the same mould, the same shapes, the same patterns, the same build-ups, the same playing out from the back. Sean Dyche ain't none of that woke shit for Sean Dyche. Uh, he's looking at 4-4-2 or a 4-4, a 4-5-1 uh, sort of approach to it as well. The aim, congest the middle area, make it difficult for the opposition to, to kind of penetrate through the middle. Um, and he, he's shown adaptability sometimes as well by making that 4-5-1 uh, really counter teams that are going to dominate possession as well. And he's, he's done quite well with it. He's actually creating more shapes in there than you would imagine, but it can be a 4-5-1. Um, and they are very stringent about keeping that compact shape. They focus on minimizing the space in central areas so you can't really pass through them. They try and force you wide. They try and make you put crosses into the box where they feel like they've got a bit of an advantage. It can lead to vulnerabilities on the flanks for them. Um, they can be caught out sometimes with switches of play, um, but it is designed to funnel opposition players into the channels either side of what is a locked down centre of the pitch, which is defending 101, to be honest with you. And that's what he's looking to do. Try and do the basics really well and try and catch teams in set plays and on the counter. It's typical underdog British old school mentality. But that's Sean Dyche in a nutshell, isn't it? And Dyche's teams have historically been strong in those areas and strong in set pieces. And that's continued at Everton where set piece routines are a significant part of both offensive and defensive play. His philosophy does lean heavily towards being direct. You will often see them bypass midfield with long direct balls into strikers or into channels for wingers to chase. They have hit by far the most long balls in the league, by far the most long balls, 930 long balls so far this season in the league, which is a lot more than any other team. Wingers do tend to tuck in when they're defending, but they're encouraged to really stretch the play and, and the ball will only go in front of them. So you'll see United's defence being turned around quite a lot and we have to deal with that better than we did on Thursday night, I think. Um, you're going to see the likes of Dwight McNeil looking quite potent because the strategy relies on basically all of the attributes that Dwight McNeil possesses. Directness, speed, whipping it in. Star man, I think um I think in Dai, actually. He's been he's not a household name for sure, but he's the sort of player that can cause United problems. He's also the sort of player that Sean Dash absolutely loves. He is a winger. Um, he's very comfortable playing centrally. He's got the dribbling ability and the physicality to cause real problems in transition, which is where I think he's probably going to be most effective for them. And I think he is their main man um, in terms of being a bit of a press beater. Amrim has got a, a very aggressive pressing approach, but the concern with someone like Ndai is that he will be able to um, do a little bit of what we saw Romani Hutchison do for Ipswich in terms of being able to take the ball under that press and play around it. Uh, I think for that reason, they'll be their main threat on the day. Um, so when that happens, when Endai absolutely cooks us, come back to this or, or drop me a tweet, okay? Match winner for United in this game is going to be uh, Mateus De Ligt. He's going to be up against Calvert-Lewin and he's going to be in an absolute tribute act to 1980s football. He is our most physically imposing defender. We've just had a conversation in here. Like, I think that... <laughs> you're, you're, you're almost now looking at six options in United's bat line. 
There's arguably more with the likes of Euro coming through and that. But the six options, I think, De Ligt is our first choice central centre defender. I think you're looking at Masrawi currently being the first choice on the right, and you're looking at um, Martinez being the first choice on the left. I think under that, you've got Euro, you've probably got Maguire, and I think Luke Shaw... I don't think Luke Shaw is going to play as a wing back anymore. I think he is now a defender, centre half, so uh, left side centre half at least. When you look at the pro profile of players who can play in the centre, in the past, Amarim's used players who like to step into midfield, and you think, okay, Masrawi, that suits. Yoro, that might suit. Um, Martinez, that really suits. Luke Shaw, that kind of suits. But I don't think it necessarily suits it in the Premier League, and we're going to see this as it evolves and as Amarim's system evolves, he's not going to do a copy paste of what we saw at Sporting. You're going to see influences of what he did at Sporting adapted to make it work for Manchester United in the Premier League. And I think one of the reasons that um, De Ligt is the main option for him is because of the physical and aerial threat that you get with teams like Everton and Calvert-Lewin in the Premier League. There's a lot of that still kicking around. And I think De Ligt is good enough, not necessarily to step in as a number six, like a Martinez or a Shaw might be, or even a Masro might be, but because of the defensive requirements that's going to be asked of him in the Premier League. And he's in for a big game this weekend. He defends the box brilliantly. And actually, that's why you think, oh, Rocky Maguire actually suits being a, a backup here to him in that role. <laughs> um, I think it's a big, big, big game for him. Uh, he's going to be vital when it comes to defensive set plays. He's going to have a physical game, which he looks like he really enjoys. Um, he's the match winner for United. In terms of the rest of the starting eleven for United, I go with Masrawi, De Ligt and Martinez because I think they're building a little bit of a rapport amongst each other. There's still question marks about when to press and when to go and I'm, I'm hoping that doesn't cost us again come Sunday. There's no options, I don't think, right now in the wing-back areas. I think it has to be De and it has to be Ahmad. De wasn't good on Thursday night. And Ahmad's the only one that's kind of looked really comfortable playing in that wing-back spot at the moment. Um, but they're the only two options that make any sort of sense. I don't think he's willing to try Garnacho or Rashford there or, or even like Luke Shaw in there at the moment. So I think it will be Ahmad and Delo. That's how I think we're going to do it. Midfield, as a four in midfield, this box in midfield, I think there's actually a lot of options here, including Maynou now. I think he's, he's going to be an option in here, but I don't think he starts. I think he goes with players that he's seen so far. And I think the players that he's seen so far, I think Casemiro, alongside Ugarte, because Ugarte has got this on lockdown. It's Ugarte's position and anybody else's job to take it off him. I think Ugarte alongside Casemiro, although I wouldn't be surprised to be, to be Bruno, but I think for the, the height requirement in the midfield, I think the physicality requirement is it's Casemiro. And then this is where it gets interesting. Long term, I really want to see Ahmad played in one of the number 10 positions. There's a, there's a, there's a strong chance it's Rashford or Garnacho as one of them to give us a little bit of a, a threat in behind, if you can get in behind Everton. I actually think you might see Bruno on Mount, either side of Hoyland. And I think that's the lineup. I think that's the lineup to get a, a, a victory in this game. Now, as always, this video is brought to you by our sponsors at Hollywood Bets, and they've got another offer for you for this game between United and Everton at Old Trafford. Can United score another win in front of our home fans? is what the bet's going to be. We're going for Rasmus Hoyland to score any time inside the 90 minutes. And we're going for over 3.5 goals. And of course, Manchester United to win. That's been boosted from 4-1 to one to 5-1. to one. So a tenner on that is going to get you 60 quid back. And if you would like to claim this bet boost, then simply click the link in the description to get started. And if you are new to Hollywood Bets, you can open an account very quick, very easy. And new customers can access additional offers as well. Details for those will be in the description if you want to go and have a look. Odds are subject to change. You must be 18 to participate. And remember, football can be unpredictable. And while the rivalry always delivers drama, there is absolutely no guarantee of success it's just meant to enhance your viewing experience and not guarantee you any sort of win for more information on responsible gaming please check out begambleaware.org again this bet is brought to you by myself and hollywood bets so click the link in the description or let me know your bets this week in the comments below and then how do we beat everton i think you have to start with second balls and headers this is going to get messy if united allow it to we don't have a big physical squad, which is why I think Casemiro is required because he, he has a, an element of that in his game. He's great in set plays, attacking and defending. Um, you've got a match there midfield in terms of energy. And I think Mount, Bruno, 
Casemiro Ugarte can do that. Um, you're looking at the current um, Idris Agay being in there. So like you, you've got to match that physicality. Otherwise you're going to get run over and then attack the fullbacks. Uh, Mikalenko and Ashley Young are a weakness for them in that team. You can get them. Let's get them. Anyway, I think United are going to win this game. I'm pretty confident going into it. Let me know your thoughts on how you think the game's going to go out and check out Hollywood Bets as well for sponsoring this video. And I'll see you lot after the game. Laters. Hey, thank you for watching the video. If you are new around these parts, then don't forget to subscribe. My channel is proudly supported by my community on Patreon. If you'd like to get a little bit of extra content, a Discord group, meetups, five-a-side games, weekly podcasts, behind the scenes, and even an occasional bit of transfer news as and when I get it, then for the price of a pint, you can show your appreciation for the content that we make and get some goodies for doing so as well. Check the link in the description or click the button right here. You'll also find all of my socials here too if you want to follow me on any of those platforms. Nice one.